So let's continue with our stack and queue playlist. It was starting off. Hey, everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So the problem that we will be solving today is maximal rectangle. So what is the problem stating? The problem is stating that you will be given an n cross m 2D matrix which only has one and zeros in it. Now your task is to give me the area of the maximal rectangle which has all ones in it. The area of maximum rectangle in this 2D matrix which has all ones in it. Let's understand. Can I take this particular rectangle? Yes, because it has all ones in it and it is a rectangle. If I figure out the area, the area will be 5 because it is 1 cross 5. 1 is the height, 5 is the width. So this is the area. But you'll have to figure out the largest, the maximal area. Do I see any other rectangle? Yeah, I do see this one, which is having an area of 6 because 2 cross 3. Okay, this is the maximal. You could look over and you'll find that this is the maximal one. You cannot take this one. You cannot take this one because there is a 0 in it. There is a 0 in it. So you cannot take this one. It has to be all 1s in it. And you need to return me the area, the maximal area. Okay, so before I move on to the solution, there is a prerequisite to this particular problem. If you haven't seen my video on largest rectangle in histogram, or if you haven't solved this one, please, please go back and solve it. Because I'll be using the concept of largest rectangle in histogram in order to solve this one. Now, the critical catch over here is, I'm looking for a rectangle with only ones in it. With only ones in it. That is the critical catch. Okay. So imagine I draw a line over here and forget about this portion. Forget about this portion for a moment. And I say that, okay, this is having a one. So I'll create a bar. This is a one. I'll create a bar. This is a one. I'll create a bar. Can I just visualize this as the histogram that we did solve? We can. If I ask you, what is the maximal area? You'll be like, one is the maximal area. Yes, one, one is the size of maximal rectangle. I didn't draw a bar on zeros because we're just cons. Cons uh, we're just considering ones over here. Okay. Now, what if I say, I'll draw a line over here. This is my line. I'll not consider this. Forget about this. I've asked you to draw bars. You'll be like, this is a bar. This is a bar. This is a bar. And this is a bar. So this is how the histogram looks like. And this will be zero. This will be zero. I've asked you to figure out the largest rectangle over here. You'll be like, Hey Raj, this is the largest rectangle. Can you say that this is the largest rectangle which is of area 3? Does that make sense? And I can easily find out using this one. Okay. Now if I go ahead and say, what if I draw a line over here and I say I'll not consider anything beyond it. Anything underneath it. And this is my line. Right. Start drawing bars. This is a bar of 3, 1, again a 3, again a 2, and again a 3. I've asked you, hey, what is the largest area over here? And if I apply the same thing that we did in this particular thing, you'll say that this is the largest one. Can I say this? Yes. And that's about six. Okay. Perfect. If I say that, okay, let's consider the last line. If I consider the last line, I'll have a bar of four. Remember the zeros will have no bars. The zeros will have no bars because I need all ones. Only two bars. And if I have to consider the maximal area, that will come out to be four, which is typically this one. Okay. Out of everything I considered, because I considered all, almost all rectangles. If you just sit back and think, I did consider all rectangles. And the maximum that I got was six, which was this one. And this came out because I did draw a histogram over here. Because I did draw a histogram over here. So this is how you'll, you'll have to connect questions to questions. You don't have to always think of a new solution. Maybe something that you have done in the past might help you to solve this particular question. Okay, fine. Now, the question arises, hey, how do I figure out this? Because I'll have to stand here, figure this is of a length one, this is of a length one, this is of a length one. And typically, I'll get an array which is something like a length one, zero, one, zero, one. And this is the array that I'll pass on to this question. Okay. After that, I'll stand over here. This is a length two, length zero, length two, length one, and length two. So basically, the array will be 2, 0, 2, 1, and a 2. How do you figure out this 2? That's the question because you just can't iterate every time because if every time you're going to iterate and count the number of 1s, that will end up taking the complexity high. We need to optimize that. So for that, what I'll do is, 
I'll try to use the concept of prefix sum. We have already done this concept of prefix sum in one of the problems. If you don't know the concept of prefix sum, please go back and watch my playlist. You'll find this concept prefix sum. Perfect. So what I'll do is I'll end up converting this. I'll end up converting this into a prefix sum 2D matrix. So what I'll do is I'll start from first one and then I'll go to the next one. So this will be two. Then I'll go to the next one. That This will be three. Then I'll go to the next one. This will be four. So understand if I'm standing here, I know that this is of a length three. I basically kept on adding. Okay. After that, I'll go to zero. So I'll add zero. I'll go to zero. I'll add zero. I'll go to one. I'll add one. Again, I have a zero. So I'll add zero. Remember, you don't add up one. You don't add this up. It's, it's similar to prefix. So you don't add this up because whenever I'm standing here, there is no bar. But if I'm standing here, there is a bar of one, which I need. You need to be careful about it. And when you're standing here, there's no bar. You have to be careful about it. Perfect. Next is 1, next is 2, next is 3, and the next is 0. So you take 0 over there because when you start from 0, there cannot be a histogram bar. Okay. After that, I have a 0. After that, I have a 1. After that, I have a 1. So 2. After that, I have a 1. I have a 3. Okay. So I realize that I need one more column. So I'll just draw that column quickly. Perfect. Now I'll go to this one. So I need a 1. I have a 1. I need a 1, 3. And eventually I'll have a zero. I can put a zero. Done. So what I have done now is if I'm standing over here, I know the values of array straight away. I know the value of arrays, values of array straight away. Perfect. After this, I'll be going to this particular, you know, this particular uh, row number. And I'll say, hey, if you're a matrix, give me this row which is mat of zero. And this is what I'll pass on. This pass on. And he will give me. And after that. I'll go to this one, which is a mat of one, because that is the list. And I'll again pass on. After that, I'll go to this, which is a mat of two, because I've already pre-computed the bar heights. After that, I'll go to this one, and I'll be mat of three, and I'll pass on. And among all the rows, whichever gives me the maximum area, that will be my answer. We're done. Yeah, we're done here. Quite simple. The only thing you need to do is the typical prefix sum where you compute the sum so that when you need the array for histogram bar, that is ready. Okay, so time to write down the pseudo code. So I'll be writing down the function. Now this function would be taking a matrix. So matrix will be a 2D matrix. The first thing you could do is you can compute n and m. Depending on the language, you can find the code below. n will be the number of rows, m will be the number of columns. I'll be needing a max area. So max area will be initially zero. I'll also be needing a prefix sum 2D array. I'll not be changing the original array because it is not recommended to change the input array. So I'll have the prefix sum. Make sure it is initially filled up with zeros and zeros. And the size is n and m. Correct. Done. What do I need to do? I need to make sure that I have this array ready, which is the p sum array, which is a prefix sum array. How am I doing it? I'm basically doing top to down summations. If I have to write down the indexing, it is 0, 1, 2, 3. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is typically 0, 0. This is 1, 0. This is 2, 0. This is 3, 0. So if you see that the number of rows is increasing and we traverse column wise, we traverse column wise. So what I can do is I could go ahead and I can say that, hey, listen, for I could do a g equal to 0 till m minus 1. Very obvious. And beneath it, I can do a sum equal to 0 and I could run something like for i equal to 0 till n minus 1. And inside that, what I could do is sum equal to or rather sum plus equal to matrix of ij because i is running if by any chance the matrix of ij encounters a zero i will make sure the sum is reinitialized to zero because we are computing you know something like this the bars will be something like this so one over here doesn't matter the bar will be something like this so the one over here doesn't matter that's why so i'll convert the sum to zero once the sum is converted, I could do a prefix sum of i, j, and I can say that, hey, can you just make sure that you store the sum? And the iteration is over. So I have the prefix sum ready. Once I have the prefix sum ready, I just need to compute over all the rows. And all the rows will be 0 till n minus 1. And what I could do is I could say max area equal to max of whatever is the max area, comma, 
imagine the largest histogram function is known as largest hist that's what we call it and we can pass on the array because it does take an array and the array will be nothing but prefix of sum and you could easily say i because you're storing a 2d matrix 2d list if you say prefix sum of i it would pick up the entire yes remember it would pick up the entire row and it will be sending it across if you are storing a 2d list this is what you will do and eventually you could end up returning a max of area that's it we are done time to compute the time complexity we have a bigo of n we have a bigo of n so for sure this is taking a m cross n time complexity to compute the prefix sum after that we are running a bigo of n again and if you remember the largest histogram ended up taking a bigo of 2n time complexity 2n time complexity so can i say that the overall time complexity will be bigo of m cross n for the prefix plus a bigo of this will be 2m because histogram takes the length of the array twice into the length of the array over here the length of the array will be the number of columns so we go of n cross 2m which is i can say near about n cross m what about the space complexity i am using a prefix sum which is taking n cross m again this is debatable you can reuse the given input array but i don't do it plus i am using stack if you remember we go of n while computing the largest histogram rectangle okay go back to the previous lecture this will be the time complexity and space complexity and i hope you have understood this so if you are still now watching and if you have understood everything please please do consider giving us a like and if you are new to our channel do consider subscribing to us as well with this i'll be wrapping up this video let's see in some of the video till then bye take care whenever your heart is broken